what's up you guys, this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays, and I'm officially back from TennoCon 2017, which was absolutely amazing. Now, for today's Rob Rants, and for those of you who don't know what Rob Rants is, we basically kind of talk about conspiracy theories, we say some weird shit, I bounce some things off of you guys and see how you guys feel about all of that weird crap, uh, but I figured I would start off with this as a little bit of an appetizer before the big main menu of all of the big Warframe reveals, because there was a lot of stuff said on the floor, you know, between between people that I'm cannot be named um, and then also things that were said in articles that you guys might have missed and in addition some things on Twitter that I definitely want to spotlight because the referencing some of the, the release stuff that you know we'll put out there in the universe so I figured before we get into that big old plethora of stuff let's go ahead and jump into a little bite called the teaser there are some really really interesting things from this as well as some interesting things that tied into other things that happen in the Warframe universe um, that I'm kind of gonna get into some some conspiracies about. So I'm gonna start off with the scene right here where we see a pod. Now this isn't this doesn't look like a normal Tenno pod, and we we can tell that this is actually one of the Lua scenery. So this is happening on the moon. So part of me almost feels like this is one of the second dream pods, as in this is like a little baby operator um, that has somehow crashed. Into uh, into the ground. It looks like literally something has because it looks like it's literally crumbled It's either dropped down from the ceiling or something has launched it out there Now I want you to pay very close attention It sounds like a flat line Do you hear that high-pitched squealing in the background Beep, like it's a really let's let's listen that again Right that could just be normal noise but it's also kind of sounding like a flat line. The next thing that I want you to pay attention to is all of this rubble. If you take a close look at some of these pieces of rubble, there seems to be some straight line cuts like you'll see right here. It looks like something has literally chopped through certain pieces. Now, if you're listening, we're getting a pulse. We're getting a pulse on something and you can hear breath. You can hear breathing you and a trace. pulse. Would you? If you could trade, would you? Surely. But all miracles require sacrifice. All right. So you have to keep that in mind. We just saw a pod that was either completely dead. You know, there was either no music to it or it flatlined. Because now we're hearing a pulse. We didn't hear a pulse before. Now we are hearing breathing and a pulse. All right? And he just said, things require sacrifice. Would you trade for their life, yours? For their life, yours. So here's the thing, and I don't know, maybe that was a Warframe pod, maybe I'm completely mistaken. I'm not, you know, big crazy Lord Nord. Please correct me, you know, in the comments if, if I am completely unfounded in this. Um, but legitimately looks like we're going to have to sacrifice something. Now, one of the things that I found very interesting is in previous data mines, I know we'll go talk about sensitive subject, but parts of the script that were that had been kind of exposed were that Umbras were Warframes gone rogue. So part of me almost feels like this frame has severed its ties from its operator. Because to me, that looked like a se second dream pod, and maybe, you know, I'll correct myself in the comments if I really fuck that up. But legitimately, it looks like he was broken free of his operator and maybe even possibly caused the destruction that caused the death of his operator. Almost saying, uh-uh, bitch, I'm done with you and your transference shit is just me, myself, and I, and whatever is made in this suit. Because as we had seen with some of the um, teasers from, oh my god, I'm gonna forget the name, the Ostron little, little colony that they had there. The Orokin had had alabaster things made out of uh, out of flesh, like they were cutting into towers. So it's clearly, the towers were bio organic, right? So I'm assuming that the Warframes are also bio organic, or I don't know how that works. You know, it's kind of like it's like outside it looks like one thing, but inside it's like fleshy. So that's what I'm assuming. You know, Warframe is kind of made out of the similar junk. So what if the similar junk on the inside is tired of just being treated as like a puppet and it's like nah fuck y'all operators peace the fuck out i'm gonna do my own shit i'm done and that's what i'm thinking is happening in this trailer it's 
it's kind of severing the transference and it's saying, nah, I'm on my own. And as you can see, he stands alone. He jumps in. He's coming. He's coming back in. He's chill about this. He's not worried. He's not worried about getting that operator back. He's just like, I'm cool. Like, I'm peacing the fuck out. Bye. Bye. Take care. And that's kind of the feeling that I get from this. Is because, I don't know. I just get this eerie feeling. This eerie feeling that it... It's not just gonna, it may not, it may be more than just sacrificing a Warframe. Or maybe what it is is when you use Umbra, you can't use Transference. I don't know. It could be something like that because there's a lot of similarity. A lot of people had said that there's a lot of similarity to the way that Umbra looks and the way that Stalker looks. And um, if we're quoting back to the second dream, there's a point where Stalker finds out that these, that, you know, we, Warframes, are children connected to... Um, you know, the frames. And he freaked the fuck out. Now, my question is, why did he freak the fuck out? Did he have a moment? Was he like, oh, shit, where is my kid? Or maybe he knows that he has no operator. And he's like, I have no operator. What What's happening here? And maybe he's freaking out because he's realizing that he is an Umbra. That he is not, you know, that he is not one of these. And, you know, Stalker always comes from the shadows, right? There's always been kind of like this weird link to Umbra through... Through Stalker. So I'm almost kind of wondering if that plays a part. Now here's another interesting thing. And I didn't get to ask Mogamu for permission to use footage, so I'm like, I'm not gonna not gonna take your footage, Mo. But um, I did want to put it out into the universe that he has a video because one of the interesting things that happened at Tenocon was that there was speedrunning missions. And the winner of the speedrunning missions, she actually became Stalker for like a, a chunk of the day. She literally invaded people's missions. She had the ability to invade people's missions and fuck with them as the Stalker, right? So she could literally go in, she was able to destroy, she was able to destroy extractors from, uh, <laughs> able to destroy extractors, she was able to hunt people down, literally jump off of walls, and, like, legit stalk people. She was able to stalk her friends, like, there's a stalker command, and when stalker loads in, there's, like, this, it's almost kind of like a landing pad with the war sticking into it, and then when you hovered over the war, you got the whole star chart, and you were able to kind of, like, go into different maps and grab at people, right? So, a part of me almost feels like, is that something, I mean, it's, that's, that's a, that's a UI resource. I mean, I'm sure they probably just created it for that day, and maybe they'll use it for future events or something like that, but it also opens up potential, because the way that I always look at things is that everything has potential to be used for something, and DE has always said that they wanted to make Umbra more than just another Warframe. What if Umbra would have the potential to, I don't know, maybe it's just trolling. I, I, I Maybe I'm just thinking too much into it, but there were resources poured into this thing, this utility. So who knows? Maybe Umbra might be able to invade people's missions kind of like you were in, able to invade in Dark Souls, right? Only people who were okay with fighting an Umbra, you know, in their missions, were okay to have a little PvP in their missions who are flagged for it, could kind of be invaded by an Umbra. I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If I've taken this conspiracy way too far, but I definitely think that there is some sort of link between what's going on with Umbra and what's going on with um, with Stalker. I also feel like you know, there might be a bigger sacrifice than we realize when it comes to using an Umbra. All right, so hold on one quick second. Future Rob here, and I had a major revelation. I don't know if you guys remember back when, um, during one of the dev streams, they said that there was gonna be some sort of rescue mechanic at some point in our orbiter remember they're like they're different parts of our ship one was going to be for like you know the all of the infested stuff but that there was going to be kind of like uh the things that had to do with the kingpin system like all of that like we're going to go assassinate there's like assassinate and then there's also um save you know save your things what if umbra is the thing that we save and, you know, so it's it's this completely separate entity. It lives on a different part of our ship. It's not us. 
but you know they their operators sacrificed themselves so that they could so that their their warframe could be free i don't know maybe their operator was dying or something but we're we we have to like save and like resuscitate an umbra and keep the umbra on our ship and then once we're successful at doing that and we have the umbra all like thing we can then you play the umbra instead of playing our warframe Okay, I'm, I'm, I, just, I just thought about that. I don't know if y'all caught it. I'm thinking in my brain. I'm just putting that out for you into the universe. Let me know what you think about that. Um, in addition to all of the other things in the comments. Um, I really don't know where I'm going to splice this in. So this must be a really awkward transition. <laughs> but I could not not say that. So uh, let me know. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I will see you guys with more TennoCon 2017 stuff later. Bye-bye.